So guys, I am finally done with all the painting on this wall and the pergola. Can't be any happier. And as you can see, I think, uh, I think it looks pretty good. Apparently the range is 2,900 to 5,200 which I think is quite a lot for just one wall in the pergola. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. Pretty happy I saved that much money. Hi everyone. Welcome back to Jeff and Chidu. I'm Wan Chi. Today I'm going to share a few tips on how I painted the outside of my house. If you're new here, please subscribe to our channel. And if you like my videos, please make sure to give us a thumbs up so that YouTube algorithm can do its job. Now let's get into it. In our previous video, I shared tips on cleaning, paint removal, and also filling. Basically the prep work before painting. Now in this video, let's get into the painting process. So one of the first and most important tip is to look out for the weather. You can't paint when it is too cold and you also can't paint when it's too hot. I think the rule of thumb is to make sure that humidity does not exceed 80% when you're doing your painting. You also want to remember on a really hot day that when you're painting, you're in a shade and there's no direct sunlight on the paint. And then obviously you don't want there to be any rain, any risk of rain in, in the same day or so. So because the wall that I was painting is north facing and most of the day we're going to get sun on the north facing wall. So I get an opportunity to do the painting between 8 a.m. to about noon in the day. Now point number two is to think about your excess. For me, I use between my ladder and also the pergola. Obviously, there's not a lot of space to stand on the pergola, so I've put a board on top. So the board acted as a stable work platform for me when I'm doing the paint job on the top section of the house. When you're painting one story above ground, you really want to think about your safety. So you need to always think of your footing. Be careful not to slip. If you have to move slowly, do that. A lot of people possibly won't have a pergola. And so to get to the upper section of the house, you might need to get scaffolding or a paint trestle. For point number three, we want to talk about personal protection. You would have noticed that I've been in my overalls for the whole time that I'm painting. That's so that I don't get sunburned and also I won't stain my clothes with paint. I would also recommend applying sunscreen because I don't have sunscreen applied to my hands and now they're like maybe a whole shade darker than my natural skin tone. I also wear sunglasses because my paint is white and it's reflecting a lot of light and glare into, into my eyes. Now point four is to always ensure there's a clean surface. I know we've already cleaned the surface before, but if you've left a wall unpainted for a few days to a week, it can start to get dirty especially in spring the birds and the insects their waste is all over the house and you know i just have a piece of cloth with me and i just basically give it a wipe down remove any any stains that are on it before i start painting also i noticed insects are really drawn to fresh paint i think it's because of the moisture content so i basically go back and remove the insect and then just give it a little touch up. Now point number five, priming and painting. I put them together because depending on the condition of your paint, you may not need a primer. For the house in the pergola, we had to scrape off a lot of peeling paint. And so we have to start from bare timber. 
and that's why we needed to prime the surface. For the primer, we use Resin's Quick Dry Primer, and for the paint, we use the Resin Sonics 101, which is great for exterior paint on weatherboards. It's also got a glossy finish, which helps to keep the house clean a lot easier than having sort of the matte or low sheen paint. Now, how many coats do we need? For primer, we're looking at one layer, unless you have a very uneven and porous surface. And then for paint, typically it's two layers. However, I've had to go three layers on the upper section of the house because the old paint was grey and the white was just not really enough in two coats. You still see some grey coming through and so the third layer was really good. It, it covered all of the grey and the house just looks like it's an even white. Now number six, I'd like to talk about masking. We'd like to put on masking and removing on the same day. This is because if you leave it on for too long, like I did, the sticky residue, the glue in the masking tape will dry up. And so when you're peeling the masking tape off, you risk peeling the paint underneath as well. Pro tip number one, you can remove sticky residue from a masking tape with thinner. Right now I'd like to talk about brushes. Um, there's a huge variety of brushes. You always like to go in with a small brush, an angled small brush. They are really good for cutting in and going onto trims and things like that. Now with brushes, you don't want to hold it like you would for uh, an artistic painting. That can make you strain your hands more than necessary. You really want to hold it like you're holding a ping pong paddle. That gives you a lot more strength to push the paint into, into the substrate. Now once you're done cutting in, what you want to do is get your big roller out and then use that to go through the majority of the wall. And the next tip is just to make sure you wait for the drying time before re-coating. I think overall the painting took a lot less time than the whole prep preparation process. I think I managed to finish painting, just the painting, in two weeks. Now let's talk about cleanup. I think that's also really important. We do not want to have paint going into your drain system or into your sewer. It's just not designed to treat paint. So the best thing to do is try and squeeze out as much paint as you can on your rollers or your brush. What I would normally do is to brush all of the paint that I can and for the roller, I use a block to try and squeeze them out. Sometimes I use my hands. And then once you've done that, you can just soak it in a pail for a few hours. That would get rid of most of the paint and into the water. And then at the end of the day, you can toss that water into a part of your garden that you're never going to look at. And then all you have to do after that is just wash it. So there you have it. I hope that my tips are helpful if you're intending to paint the outside of your house. As you can gather from my two-part video that painting with brushes and rollers, it's a really long process. It's not a one-day job. I've taken a total of five weeks. I think I'm going to check out the spray painting method the next time I need to do the other walls of the house. If that happens, I will be sure to make a video of it. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you again soon.